What's going on guys, Unknown Player here and today as expected we have a lot to talk about for Destiny 2, a very big day for the game so a bunch of stuff was announced and quite a lot of stuff put in the game as well. We have our very first look at the last word exotic which Bungie have confirmed is returning but I've also found his perks, his icons, lore tabs and some other details about the weapon. It's not a drill, the gun is coming back. There's also multiple new vendors so Eva Levante is actually back with a redesign as well as a bunch of others like a Tex Mechanica vendor and then on top of that we have a bunch of crazy new exotics, some new raid details, some big nerfs like the Iclos shotgun unfortunately. So we're going to run through all of that plus a bunch more random stuff that I found. Of course if you enjoyed the video hitting the like button down below is much appreciated and let's jump into the first topic. So let's talk about the last word. So of course since Forsaken I've been pointing out Bungie have been placing a lot of teasers and hints and references to this weapon in particular making it very possible it would come back. Then more recently we had leaks that said the weapon would come back in Black Armory and now Bungie it seems aren't keeping the weapon much of a secret not that it was one but they teased it coming back in its official quest line which is starting on the 29th of January and it's called the draw. So you can see the actual last word on this hunter's hip it seems to be like a darker more black version but this of course is Callum's grave the location where Shin Malfur the owner of the last word killed Callum. Shin actually isn't too fond of the guardians right now he's definitely worried about a bunch of us becoming dredgeons and going down a dark path so he's definitely very kind of cautious but besides this pretty obvious teaser we do have a bunch more information on this weapon. Some of you may remember a user called Ginzor found the Thunderlord icon in the game files before it actually released and the the same day to mine actually revealed the official icon for the last word. The same as when we first saw Thunderlord, these icons don't have the yellow exotic background behind them, but if I put one behind it, you can see this is what it's going to look like. Bungie also just now in this update added a brand new perk, which is called Fanfire. So of course that is the first perk on the original last word. Now in Destiny 2's version, it's back as an exotic trait and also gives you faster reload and increased accuracy on hit fire damage, so not even kills. In previous videos, I've talked about the High Noon perk, which is basically the identical last word perk which is again upgraded. So this appears to be it. This is what the last word in Destiny 2 is going to look like. Fanfire is the main exotic trait and then High Noon as another perk further down the tree. And then we do also have the icon for the lore book for the last word, the Tex Mechanica icon there, probably from the quest line. So I'm sure most of you already believe the last word was coming back, but now just in case there's any doubt, you can throw it away. The grain of salt is definitely returning. We just have to wait until January 29th for his quest line. Now we also have some new vendors. So you might remember the four that I mentioned previously for the factions. If you don't know, there are actually four robot vendors corresponding to each faction. So Octavius 99. 40s for Omelon, Hector for Hacker, Shinshi for Soros, and Viper for Weist. And now the new one in this update is a very surprising name. The Tex Mechanica Foundry is called Tex 9940. There's also a couple of items like sparrows that reference this character, but it's most likely they could have something to do with the actual last word quest line. Eva Levante is actually returning from Destiny 1, so the old vendor that used to sell shaders and emblems and pretty pointless, but now in Destiny 2 is coming back in the dawning event. It's pretty weird because Festival of the Lost, which we just had, was actually Eva's event. She basically hosts it all the time, but of course she was gone and just vanished. Amanda Holiday, who always used to host the Dawning and SRL hosted festival or now Eva is hosting the Dawning. So it's basically backwards. So pretty similar to last year, you're going to go around to vendors and instead of giving them gifts, you're going to give them cookies. So that's going to be a part of the quest line and also ends up with an exotic sparrow as the final reward. You may notice her face looks a bit different. She's had quite a redesign and that's because Tyra Khan is actually a copy and paste version of her. Back in Destiny 1 with Rise of Iron, they reused Eva's face and basically turned her blue to make Tyra Khan. That could be part of the reason why they didn't put her in Destiny to the same as Master Ives who shares the same voice as Devrim K but now she's back looking a bit different and then a much more important vendor we're going to meet is called Ada One and she of course is the Black Armory vendor. She's going to be helping us in this season to find new weapons and quest lines and stuff like that so it's going to be the main kind of character kind of like Anna Bray before Black Armory. Next up let's talk about new exotics so we have five of them five weapons so far the first one is an exotic sniper we've seen a few times in trailers this one gives you a special reload where you can put all four bullets into one super high damage bullet. Bungie did say this weapon should compete with the Whisper and Sleeper and things like that. So we'll see what that's like, but looks pretty crazy. There's an exotic bow, which Bungie described as very similar to Thorns. So it's basically a bow version of that gun, but we know that's returning in Joker's Wild. But this bow, if you hit the right shots, is going to do burn damage to enemies and also an explosion that does even more damage to all enemies nearby. We have what Bungie is calling a new exotic fusion rifle. This thing is like a hand-mounted grenade launcher that shoots a giant fireball that sets on fire and tracks people. Not sure what about that fits into the fusion rifle category, but 
quite sure. The fourth one is this very fallen inspired exotic grenade launcher and this thing fires chain lightning. And the fifth exotic is the last word which of course you have to wait until the 29th of January for like I mentioned. With it being the Black Armory DLC there is of course a bunch of black armor so I've seen a lot of black and red. There is a black and red shader but I'm hoping there's at least one just solid black shader like Sooth Black. There is also going to be a bunch of new machine guns added so legendaries, rares and things like that. The Lost Forges horde mode of course is the new public event type thing. It's basically in lots of public areas and you can see matchmaking is actually available. So you go around, kill enemies, get loot. Pretty similar to what we've seen before. I'm hoping it's got some good loot pools behind it as interesting gameplay. There are also a bunch of new weapon mods which do sound very interesting. A lot of them are basically extensions of existing perks. They make them last longer and more powerful. This I really do like, like extending the duration of Rampage for example. That could be used with a new Gambit weapon to make it just crazy. The brand new raid is called the Scourge of the Past and it's actually set in a brand new area of the Lost City. Both Deej and Cosmo actually clarified in interviews why Bungie are calling it a raid and not a raid lair. They pretty much said it's because it's a brand new location. There's no reused areas, it's never been seen before. It's not just a new part of the Leviathan like the previous raid layers. But Bungie also said that this new raid is going to be bigger than the previous two raid layers. So somewhere between that and Last Wish, which is a pretty difficult comparison. Of course, there's massively different scales. They said Wrath the Machine a lot. I don't think it's going to be quite as big as that, maybe three encounters, but it's going to be a fairly decent piece of content. So that's why they're calling it a raid and not a raid lair. There's also quite a big fallen theme in this raid. So it seemed to be the main enemy. You got a lot of fallen enemies around it, this weird splicer looking dude. And again, the name of this raid is called Scourge of the Past. So Scourge is the word we've seen before a lot with the Fallen and Destiny 1. Also, as a reminder, and on the 9, the leaker that leaked Thunderlord and Last Word and everything pretty much, he did specifically say this raid is going to be in the Lost City. Like I said, this leaker is never wrong. They've said everything correct and everything has come true in the game. They actually did stop posting leaks, so we're not going to see any more of it, but everything they have said so far is going to be true as well. So that means the Hawkmoon, Thorn and Rose are coming in the next DLCs, and for Destiny 3, we're getting Europa and Darkness subclasses. Those are all things he said right before he deleted his account, so we can assume they're all going to be true as well. So moving on to something that Bungie didn't announce, they actually snuck in a couple of bosses that have some weird mechanics to them, but you can see them in patrol locations. They added a bunch of new triumphs, but some of them actually pertain to these enemies. So you can see the Forge Saboteur eliminating the Gulch and one in the outskirts of the European Dead Zone. And there are lots of these on different planets. So there's some on Nessus, I believe. I'm pretty sure all of the locations where the Forge activity can be. All right, so I've flown into the Gulch, which is where one of these bosses should be. I'm doubting... Yeah, I don't think those are any of them. I'm not sure if there's going to be text when he arrives or what happens. He could already be here and I don't know. I guess we'll find out and hopefully it doesn't take too long. Neutralized shield zones. High targets nearby. A forged saboteur has arrived. I'm guessing that's him. Yeah, there you go. Got pretty lucky with that when he spawned pretty much straight away. So you got field commander, forge of something. He's got these things around him and he's immune. So I take it you just shoot these little blue drones that are giving him a shield. Pretty cool little mechanics. Like a new animation. I quite like that. And the shield's down. So now he takes damage. All right, let's see how much he takes of this. Oh, he's got a quite quite a bit of health. I'm pretty sure he's also 605. He's actually above <laughs> above our current power level. I've still got this not forgotten on from Crucible for some reason. I mean, it's not a bad weapon for DPS. It's actually pretty decent. Definitely not Eichelos shotgun level, but it's pretty good with the bonus damage. You know, I'm actually going to let this guy kill me because I want to see his power level. I want to see if it really is 605. Oh, his drones respawned. Oh, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Yeah, 605 recommended power. So this guy is actually above our current level. The blue things around him do seem very similar to the kind of blue energy you see in the forge activities i'm guessing it's a very similar thing wait what is this over here is this another dude oh it's a it's a box guarded by and it disappeared was that part of the thing i'm guessing that's like a cache that he's defending once you defeat him you have to go get that i was not aware of that like i said we're discovering everything right now okay so one of the triumphs is done that's one of the two all right so the other boss is in the outskirts let's go there and hopefully this time not miss a chest while we wait for this dude to show up there's actually a bunch of new changes bungie have made which are quite controversial the first one is this thing the eye cloth shotgun has been nerfed pretty heavy enough as well and the eye cloth shotgun if you don't know is literally the best weapon in the game the most high damage dealing weapon in the entire game no exaggeration i'm not sure if it will still be like that after the patch but currently only three shots activate with trench barrels so you can only get three high damage bullets off so you have to be kind of weird with it like you can see you can shoot three and then you have to knife again and then three and now I need to reload and then knife again and then one two three and then reload and then knife again one two three so yeah it's a pretty awkward way to use it you can't just knife and then just spam away I mean it's still going to be a very 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 powerful weapon but not quite what it was before. But now, as much as it does suck, I can actually use other guns and not feel like I'm just being at a disadvantage now. So it's kind of a weird one. I like it and dislike it at the same time, but I think overall it should be hopefully better for the game. But let me know down below, what do you guys think of it? Are you happy? You're not happy? I'm sure a lot of people are not very happy, but I know a lot of people did also want and request this change, so we'll have to see. Something else a lot of people did also ask for is for them to put trench power on other shotguns. That is something they're doing. So we did see one of the new shotguns in the trailer actually has trench barrel on it, so you can confirm to get it on other shotguns now. But the thing I really like is 
that shotgun was kinetic, so you can actually use that and now an energy weapon as your primary, which I love. Is the dude just arrived? Oh, there he is. He arrived. The boss dude is here. All right, let's see what this guy's saying and hopefully not miss the chest this time. I do see it on the right over there. I'm curious to see what's inside this chest once we unlock it, but I'm doubting it's going to be much. If anything, it could just be empty. We have seen a lot of times Bungie don't put anything in this kind of chest, so I'm probably assuming it's going to have nothing or maybe a few shards or just planting materials. Although the last boss did drop that, so we have to see. Okay, so we've got EDZ Saboteur's Elimination. So you've got the Triumph for both of these Saboteurs, and now we can see... What is this chest about? Let's shoot this thing. There's the drone, the shield's down, and collect loot. Let's see. Probably nothing. And nothing. It just opened. But there you go. I guess it's a fancy special Black Armory chest. We've got the Triumph, which is worth 50 score for both of these saboteurs. And that, of course, is going to be just for EDZ. So there's some for Nessus and I think Titan, others. I have just seen a few people tell me that apparently when you kill the saboteurs, you have a small chance of getting a new Black Armory weapon. Not sure if that's true because I haven't seen one, but apparently you can from the actual saboteurs, the enemies, not the chest. Jumping into the tower, of course, is a bunch of new stuff as well. I'm not sure what is going on here, but okay. This may look familiar or may not, but this is actually and Brask's armor set, the original Hunter Vanguard before Cade. So he used to be the Hunter Vanguard with Akora and Zavala, but then he was murdered by Tanix the Scar, the Destiny 1 strike boss. Because of basically this bet called the Vanguard Dare, which is why this armor set is called that, Cade took up his friend's cloak and basically avenged him to become the new Vanguard, which probably wasn't a good idea for Cade because it got him killed. There's also a bunch of new exotic ornaments. One in particular I want to point out is this one. This was actually exclusive and only added to the Korean version of Destiny that recently came out called Destiny Guardians. This is the icon for that version. Yuna, the Vendar, uses the icon and also, of course, is based off the Korean flag. And there's also what I'm assuming is Korean text on the side there. I'm not sure what it says, but if any of you are Korean, maybe you can tell me. I really like that there's an ornament for the Thousand Voices. This thing looks amazing. This is probably one of the coolest looking helmets for a hunter I've seen. This thing looks so, so cool. I wish it wasn't an ornament for one of the worst exotics in the game. This is one of those text Mechanica items I mentioned. So this thing has got a lore tab from Text 99, the vendor, of course, for them. It's got the exact same etchings and markings here as the last word, which is funny, but it looks very much like a prospector. This thing's like a big barrel and you can see the sight lines. It's pretty much like a weapon, but a sparrow. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then leaving a like rating down below before you leave is massively appreciated. Stay tuned on this channel for some very special videos coming soon, so make sure you are subscribed if you're not already. You can also follow my Instagram, which is linked in the description. Clicking on this image will take you to another video of mine. But as always, I appreciate you guys and I'll see you all in the next one.